Well, now that we have this nice train, we're just going to add another method to our class by typing in def and then stop wherever. And this will be a train method. So we'll type in self and to enter this little portion here within the, the brackets. So then once we have this, we need to specify how the train will be able to pick where where and what stop it will stop at. So in order to do this, um, there's a thing called a random number generator. So we're just going to import one and generate some random numbers for the train to be able to stop on those specific stops. It's going to be pretty simple. So let's just go up here right quick and then we're going to import uh, random. And that's it. Now all we have to do is just come back down and type in what we want the train to do at whenever it does stop wherever. So to do this, we're just going to type in skip. This will be the number of stops that we'll be trying to skip. And then we're typing random that ran it. So, and we're going to specify a range that we'll be doing this in. And the range will be anywhere between zero stops and the length, the length of the total stops. and subtract one in order to adjust for uh, programming indices. So whenever you have a list, the list will start at spot zero rather than one. Uh, just a little caveat to programming in Python. So the next, we're going to print out a little statement that says uh, that the driver fell asleep. Driver fell asleep and going to stop and we're just going to put in where the train will be stopping at for this point in time just going to specify string self dot stop and the number of um, stops it will skip oops Nice. So this will just say, or this will just notify us where the train will be stopping at. The reason I decided to do it this way is because the, the train will generate a random number that, or a random stop that is available on the track. And at that point in time, the driver will just fall asleep and drive to, to that stop without the passengers knowing, which I've experienced myself. I mean, this is a little bit of overgeneralization, but it's it's pretty similar. And I feel like it's a little easier to grasp it this way as well. And we're going to type in return of what's going on. Return to skip number. Okay, so now that we have our stop wherever method, we just need to test it right quick by running the program to make sure everything has been written properly. There are no silly mistakes. So just ran it and it looks like the train is still doing fine and it's still able to interpret what's going on. So Python is not complaining, I'm not complaining, we're all good. So then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to implement the stop wherever method up here in the drive to the next stop. And in order to do this, let's give ourselves some room and we're going to type in uh, these quick functions here. Uh, we're going to say that if self dot counter is equal to five. Oh, so this counter thing, I will just keep track of how many stops the train has gone so far before it starts generating a random number and driving to that stop. So in order to, to implement this, we'll just go into add a counter inside of the, the init method uh, for the train. So do self dot counter. And for right now, we're just going to say that it equals zero. Since it will be starting at zero and we will be adding a one to, to the counter every time the train passes a stop. So once it hits five stops, the train will just pick a random stop to go to. Okay, so then the next thing to do would be to say self.stop number is equal to self.stop wherever. And what this does is basically say that the stop number 
will be the randomly generated number of where the train should stop. And solve that counter is equal to zero. So the reason I'm saying that it's equal to zero is because every time that the train will generate this random stop to go to, it'll just reset itself. So then it will count back up to five again. So an example, uh, the counter will start off at zero. The train will drive to stop one. We'll add a one to the counter. Then dr the train will drive to step uh, station two and we'll add another one. And then the counter will be at two. So once the counter reaches five, then the random number generator will kick in and the train will go to a random station. So let's go ahead and quickly adjust for the, the counter and each one of these, these stops to notify the train of how many stops it has visited already. So to do this, we're just going to say self.counter plus equal to one here, whenever the train is going forward each stop and I'm going to say self.counter plus equal to one whenever the train is running in reverse because we want the train to add a one regardless of whether it's going forward or backward on the tracks. Okay, so I'm just kind of looking over the code to make sure everything is okay and in order the way I want it to be. And after I've looked over it, we can try to go ahead and run it and see what happens. So, okay, running it will give us an error. Let's see what it says. It says name stops is not defined. And let's add another S here. Okay, so now having ran this, let's go ahead and check over whether or not the train is actually skipping these stops or not. And from what it looks like, let's see. So we start off at station 105, then we drive to 96, 90th, 81st, 72nd, and 81st again. Then all of a sudden the train driver fell asleep and is going to stop at <laughs> 81, which basically he just fell asleep at 81 and he woke up at 81 then he goes to 90 96 105th and 96 again let's so let's see if it will generate another one so we got 81 twice in a row ran out another time and this time the train driver is going to stop at 90th street and then go to 96 so let's see so here we see the train driver went to 81st street then all of a sudden he went to 96th street, he skipped 90th street completely, and then he went uh, to 105th and then back 96th. So uh, as we can see, uh, the program is working as intended, and it's a little more realistic in my opinion of how the train actually operates here in New York. Well, so that's pretty much it for the object-oriented programming. Quick overview, uh, included everything, if statements, for loops, what else, classes and methods in it. So I think that's just kind of a broad spectrum of what object-oriented programming is. And I think it's very similar to storytelling because as you saw, we were able to put digital objects and we can use those digital objects to represent real world objects and vice versa, just as a writer would be able to uh, as well. But I think programming is slightly more dynamic than writing because the creator or the user, they would have a lot more variability and trying to uh, decide what to do with that object. So I really hope you guys liked my video. I really wanna hear your comments below and what you think about object-oriented programming itself, programming in general, or if my code could be any better, or if there's any way that you would improve it or improve my video. Anyways, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the further videos.